What I've done that's kind of interesting is I've made this one out as an arch top. This one's a regular flat top. This one's a chromatic dulcimer and this one's a regular diatonic scale dulcimer. They're essentially the same instrument though. Flying V's will stand on their tail without a stand, so I figure they're more likely to get played than most instruments since they're not sitting in their case off by themselves somewhere. They're both fitted with electric guitar type pickups. I actually made them myself. I make a lot of pickups because regular electric guitar pickups have the wrong frequency response range aside from just having the wrong number of pole pieces. Unlike most of my dulcimers, I don't have any onboard controls. I wanted to keep everything really simple on these. They've both got custom cut pearl inlays. It's a little V3 emblem. It's like the V8 emblem that the old Fords used to have with part of the 8 cut off because I thought it was funny. The flying V shape is actually really easy to build because it's straight sides that go right in the tail blocks and it's a good shape for holding because it actually hooks in the crook of your arm so it doesn't push out like a round back does and your hand ends up falling right in the proper strumming position. also like to say this one's got tenor banjo strings on it and it's the wound tube that's on the top two bass strings. That way I can get DAD tuning out of it even though it's got a shorter scale length. It's only a 23 inch scale length. This one's got regular dulcimer strings so it's GDG tuning which actually is a pretty good tuning in and of itself. with a strap or a string. So I got a little hog ring on the ear here and I got a gripper strap button right here. Now both of these turned out pretty good. They're not as loud as my regular dulcimers are. They're only a little louder than a strum stick is but I think that's probably all right for what they are. Anyway I have to expect that in the entire world that's probably the only arch top arch back flying V dulcimer Probably the only arch top flying V anything as far as being an acoustic goes. I had originally thought to do it for a guitar, but I figured I better try it with the dulcimer first and see how it works out. It works out pretty good. It's got a warmer tone in that the uh, trebles aren't emphasized as much as they would be on a regular dulcimer, which sometimes is what you're going for and sometimes isn't. It all works out pretty nice and with the pickup it gives it the versatility to do pretty much whatever you want. 
There's a video for the building of the cigar box guitar tenor guitar versions of these dulcimers elsewhere on this channel. And after this I have a video that shows a large part of the construction of these two dulcimers. Cleaned up the edge and I gotta make sure to get rid of that check so I drew the profile on there. I like how it turned out on this one. So I'm going to do the same thing on the edges of both the arch back and the flat back. And I'm going to do an arch top for this thing. In fact, really, the whole point of this project is because I wanted to play with this uh, little bit of salvaged redwood I got. I got about a six foot long beam, pretty good sized beam of this stuff, and it looks like it would make pretty good tops. say I'm lucky but I mean I bought them all. It's one of the very first things I did when I started woodworking back when I was a teenager to get a whole bunch of bar clamps. But this is murder to do with spool clamps. Now if you ha have to do it and you don't have a bunch of quick grip clamps you can actually throw it in the box that I glue the braces up with and you just use shortened sticks and you can do the same thing. I strongly believe in laminated necks. The glued up necks like this, the extra layers all glued together keep everything a lot more stable than if it was a regular neck. It resists twisting, it resists warping, and truthfully, it keeps you from having to use a truss rod, but I won't put a truss rod in anyway because you never know what's going to happen down the line and if you have a good dual action truss rod you can always fix it. The dulcimers I'm going to do, they're not, they don't have truss rods but they're strung so light it doesn't even really matter. Okay, let's talk about some fretboard facts for a minute because a lot of people never seem to catch on to this. I'm doing 
all three of these that I'm working on right now, two dulcimers and a tenor guitar, and they're all going to be 23 inch scale length. Scale length is the length of the string from the nut to the bridge, not taking into account any extra little bit for compensation. So it actually doesn't make any difference whether it's a dulcimer or a tenor guitar, except that this is the dulcimer and you see how it's got an irregular pattern of the frets. Well, all it is is that it's missing certain ones. You're missing the two and the three and the six and the eight and the 13, 15, 18, and 20 for two octaves because that's an octave, that's an octave. Now, if you notice, that's not really very many frets difference. And so if you think someone's building a dulcimer because they're too lazy to put in the rest of the frets, that's not it. The reason you build a dulcimer is because you want a dulcimer. It takes literally like a minute worth of difference in time to build a chromatic one as opposed to a regular one. So I'm going to build one chromatic dulcimer out of this fretboard, a tenor guitar out of this fretboard, and this will be my other dulcimer just a regular dulcimer. The regular 26 and 5 8 dulcimer fretboard that I use, it's actually the same scale length as a banjo, 26 and 5 8 It's just the same thing, you're leaving off certain frets. That's why I got this one circled like this. These are the circles to do for a dulcimer. These extra frets are the ones to turn it fully chromatic. Also, it's the case with tenor guitars that the 25 and a half inch scale length of the fender it lines up somewhere like maybe maybe 22 and 3 quarters if you cut off the first two frets of a Fender guitar fretboard. So you can actually use that as a pre-cut fretboard for a tenor guitar. It, you'll have to check it to make sure because I don't remember exactly because I don't do it that way. But it's another way around it and you should be able to pretty much find something to use for a tenor guitar fretboard just by figuring how long the scale length ought to be by measuring from the zero fret or nut to the octave and doubling it. I end up using zero frets a lot and it's a real simple reason like it's not that hard to do regular nuts but what the zero fret will get you is you can switch strings around a lot easier. You don't have to have everything all perfect for a larger string size so you just you do everything else with your normal frets and you have a taller fret in the zero fret position just a little bit taller and it has a divider that looks like a nut and then you can swap to whatever gauge string you want so long as the saw cuts big enough and if it's not it's really easy to trim a divider because you haven't got to worry about where it actually seats so long as it gets far enough down This is the new concept spelled K-N-E-W. Jeweler saw that I just bought. It's like 80 bucks. This thing weighs as much as about three of these. So the weight's one really nice thing, but it's got a really simple adjustment to it. It's got a cam so that you can detension the blade to switch them. It makes a big difference when you're cutting pearl because you end up breaking a lot of blades. 
there's all the pearl pieces I cut out for it. Even with that new saw, I still got about half a day's labor just in cutting them out. It'll still end up being another two hours or so just routing out to put all the pieces in. So you can see, you really kind of got to be a true believer to be doing this. You really got to believe that you're going to be able to build a couple of flying V dulcimers and a flying V tenor guitar and people are going to want them. Not only, not only building them, but building extravagant ones. Really fairly fancy, because you can see it would take me about 20 minutes to just put some dots in there, but what I really wanted was the little V emblems for fret markers. It seems crazy. It seems like a cute, kitschy little thing that I'm doing, but you actually have to believe it's worthwhile and really do it seriously. To do something this silly and have it work, you have to be very serious about it. I suppose the thing to keep in mind though is that to me all this isn't silly. And even when you come to think about it, this is actually my opinion of the logical next step in the dulcimer and cigar box guitar construction if you're following that line of thought. This just makes sense. So I even forget while I'm doing this that it is what it is. And then when people react oddly to it, act like it's a novelty instrument or a toy or something, you know, I just don't consider it from that point of view. trim the next stub down and it'll fit in there and it'll get a little plug right above it but it just slides in slides in and I have to tap it in because it wedges really tight once it's in and I'll fill that and grind it off and that'll be ready for paint To make things easy, I drilled a couple holes and I stuck the pickup wire through it, threaded it through the body. That way I won't have to run it after the fact and try to keep it from rattling. I don't have to have anything clever to secure the neck. All I do is glue both ends of it, slide it in place, and it'll be plenty enough to hold it for the life of the instrument. And I have to make dead sure the thing settles all the way down because it just barely clears all the braces inside. I mean, that's by design. But still, if I was to manage to stick it together, have it float a little bit, it would cause me problems later. So here's my Flying V collection all about to go in the paint. I have the cigar box guitar over here. I have an arch top dulcimer here, and I have a regular dulcimer here. This one's chromatic, and this one will just be a regular dulcimer. Zebra wood, arch back zebra wood. Now the redwood for both these tops is salvage 
from a building built about 50 years ago, the Ranch Mart Shopping Center. When they tore it down and put a new facade on it, I got a very little bit of redwood beam out of it. And it's not wide enough to build any arch top guitars out of without really trying, but it's big enough to build some dulcimers out of, and I wanted to try it out and see what it acted like before I did anything too ambitious with it. Dulcimers are a good way to do that. Anyway, that's all about those. So thanks for watching.